This trailer is outfitted with a what we call our rollout simulator table and we'll get into how we run that here pretty quick but the the main thing for this trailer uh, if you're going to be using this is the trailer needs to be level so that the, when when you roll this table out that that you can adjust the uh, adjust the legs so that it is level front and back side to side and so we've got a little level inside the the in the trailer for you to use or you might be better off to get a longer longer level but this little level here works pretty good now the doors have um, a latch that will hold it open extension if you want to uh, put posters or something like that on on the side it also works as a decent display area in the cabinets you'll find a tub such as this that should have all the adapters that you need for your to hook up your rainfall simulator it's got some uh, microfiber cloth uh, to clean your jars it's got a cleanup nozzle there's uh, if you are in a situation that you need to hook up to uh, emergency uh, power for in case the you might have trouble with uh, the remote on the tower or a battery goes dead or something like that in one of your your key fobs and then uh, we have different ways that you can run your simulator without having full power off the trailer just there's nothing worse for me is to be getting ready to do a presentation and all of a sudden nothing works and so we've set you up with a, a set of adapters you can hook it up to the the uh, cigarette lighter in a vehicle or you can hook it up to an old an auxiliary battery with a set of alligator clamps and we've got all the adapters that you need to hook it up so that you can run your run your simulation here uh, hopefully that's not going to be necessary uh, what we have gone to with these water towers now is uh, it comes with a 12 volt battery pack and there's a um, the battery snaps into the back of the box that'll set up there like this on top you have to plug this in to the battery this is the the um, wiring to the motor and the remote system and then then there's also two two key fobs that uh, that, that control the remote on this and Turn it on and off with that. But you also have to make sure that you have the battery switched on on the back of the, the tower once you do. If you need to take that in and charge it, then you just snap the, snap the battery out of the box and take that inside. There's also a charger that you can plug it into in-house or you can also plug it into your 12 volt uh, system on your car. We'll get into hooking this up here in a minute, but this one is outfitted with a remote to control the oscillating motor and also a water uh, valve on it. So when you click that on, you'll have automatic water and you can also shut it off in the middle of your demonstration if you see you want to uh, stop and explain something to your crowd is you can turn it off and then, then do demonstration and there'd be very little drip out of the nozzle with this with this uh, this valve here okay i'd encourage you when you get ready to start setting all this up you get most of your equipment out and available so that you don't have to run in and out of the trailer very often um, you'll have you have a pressure regulator and once you get that set for a water system you can probably just lock it down and it'll and it'll stay pretty good uh, but what you'll have to do is if you're running off of a city water connection or uh, or hydrant you you'll probably have to change the, the that valve a little bit and that's just all you do is uh, is you screw this T T knob in and out and that'll set the help you set the pressure on your on your water tower we recommend for the nozzle that you have with this uh, it's designed to give you a, a simulated raindrop impact at a certain amount of pressure at a certain height. And so 
it's normally set 60 to 72 inches above the, the pans and you will be running between five and a half to seven pounds of pressure. Round six is usually pretty good. And so it's not a lot of pressure, but our intent is to try to get the size of the raindrop so that it's, it's, a, it's a fairly good simulation of what you would have on a normal impact of a fairly intense rain uh, on your soil surface. I'm gonna start by hooking up some of my hoses and stuff. We supply you with two 10-foot hoses for this. Uh, and then there's also 50-foot hose here. And what this design is for is you can either run it out of the back of the trailer with this rollout set up, or you can pull four pins and put the original legs on the table and take it out and set it up in a different location if you're not going to have access to the trailer where you're going to be working. But I imagine in most cases you probably just work right out of the back of the trailer. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my pressure regulator. And we'll hook that on the male end of the hose. And I want this between my hoses so that I don't have to stand in the water to adjust the pressure on my, my uh, water gauge. If you put this directly to the water tower, uh, then by the time you get it, get it adjusted, you may be fairly wet because it's, it's right in there. So this allows you to get away from your tower. You can actually stand in front of it and, and get a chance to see how much pressure you're running. Okay, this hose will hook into the bottom of the water tower in here after I roll this out. And this side, we're gonna hook into the water valve on the side of the trailer. The next thing we'll do is we'll, we'll hook up the, the water attachment to the outlet on that. And this is just a little slip-in valve that you'll stick in and turn this in. Uh, might also mention I'm doing all this with a water pump off because once in a while when you turn that in, you might get a little bit of a spray. And if you don't have the valve closed, you can get a pretty good bath with it. So we're gonna slip this in like that. That just pokes in and does a quarter turn. And then I'm gonna hook my hose up to this valve here. Now I can turn my water pump on. Okay, and it pressurizes up and shuts off. And until I turn this valve on, I won't have any water in the hose. And so you're basically all hooked up on this end of it. Um, and then we'll hook up the, the water tower and set up the simulator now. And then right before we get ready, we'll turn this valve on. Okay, if you get to the location and your battery's dead and you don't have a chance to get it charged or something else has gone wrong with that. Um, we have a backup system in here that just goes directly to the motor and there's another little patch, little pigtail cord in here and you won't get this mixed up to the cord that goes to the battery because it will not plug into the battery. To get it to plug into the battery, you have to have one of these little adapters to hook that up. But we do that so that you don't get those mixed up. To use that, we have uh, a couple of extension cords that you can plug into your water tower. It also has a switch on it, and then you can plug this into your into your big vehicle cigarette lighter or into an alternative battery with those alligator clamps on there. And then this switch is now your, your uh, device to turn on your, your water system. And it will also, you should have enough distance on that so that you don't have to stand in the water to do that. And we supply you with two cords so you have a way to get away from that so that you can turn your water and you can turn your uh, your tower on without getting wet. 
Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is set up the rollout uh, table. And to do that, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is, is uh, release these legs. There's a little hairpin clip in these, so you have to take that off first. And we'll put those back in after we set it down. Then the next thing you'll do is you'll release the knobs on the side so that you can lower the rails. And you can pop that bolt out because you'll use that later. And since you have your trailer leveled, you also want to level your, your rails back and forth. On the side of the, on the side of the rails, there's a switch that runs this little actuator to, to level your legs. Um, a good place to check this is you want to have this so that the, the rails are perfectly aligned before you start lining this up and so that you can roll your table out. And if you feel in the joint on the two rails back here, um, I've got a little bit of a jump up on the, the front rail. And so I'm gonna adjust this and run this down so that that goes, comes out of it. Do that on this side too. And once that's straight, then you can roll your table out. There's a secondary way of checking that as well. And these bars here are to help stabilize the, the rails on that. And if you hook those back up, then you can also feel and see if they're running true along the top of the rail and check your joint here. This one's off a little bit. I'm gonna drop it down some. And once that's flush, then it should let your simulator roll through. And once you have your table in position, then you can level up your... Okay, that looks pretty good for both sides. We've outfitted this with a quick coupling uh, connector for your, for your tower. And we have this set so that the, these ears are parallel to the top of the table. The reason we do that is, is so that it doesn't flop and wobble too much. There's a set of hairpin clips that sit in there to lock those in place. And you want to square that up as much as possible, but if you've got this lined up, it should be fairly true. So then we'll hook up our hose. What I like to do at this point is, is make sure that my, everything works, that the spray is, is spraying where it's supposed to. The table is designed so that the oscillating the nozzle should clear the end of the table before it swings back. And if for some reason it gets knocked off, then you, you may have to adjust the angle of your nozzle. But uh, we preset those so they should be right from, from our shop. But, if not, then this is the way you'll, you'll test that. We have the water pump on, and we've got our water hooked up, and the only thing we need to do is, is turn our water on from the valve on this side. When you first turn your pump on, you'll hear it 
cycling and oscillating sometimes and that's usually because there's air pressure or air in the lines and it takes a little while for that to purge out. Uh, I'm going to step out here and, and turn my system on. <laughs> just, just as we expected. What did we do? There we go. Okay, we've adjusted the, the pressure on the, the nozzle and we have this adjusted so, so it's around seven pounds of pressure. If you, if you drop the nozzle down, you probably would want to increase your pressure just so that you get the same rainfall impact. But if you use it to the full height of the tower, the, that, that, that pressure you should get a pretty decent replica of natural raindrop. The next thing I want to do is make sure that I've got that I've got it adjusted properly for right and left. And what I do is is I watch the end of the table so that when when the water passes over, I want to see it go past. And so the splash that you see on the end of the table, you'll see it go splash and stop and then splash and go back to the next. So you'll want to see the splash splash, and you'll watch that on both ends. If you don't see that, if you see that it it's turning over the top of the table, over the frame of the table, that means it's just gonna be turning over the top of one of your pans as well. And the people watching your presentation will pick up on that real fast and this pan will be getting way more water than, than the others would. So let's watch that and see how that works. You see it goes splash, splash, and it's going clear past this one, and it's going clear past that one. So you see, should see a brief interruption in the, the drip on the... Okay, I think we've got everything set up that we need to set up. Now it's time to load the trays and get, get the demonstration ready. This is the very same table that we use on our, on our portable systems. Uh, we've just mounted it on a set of short legs for, for the rollout demonstration. And we also have those legs are in the trailer that if you decide that you want to have to take this off and, and use it in another location that you can't get to your trailer with, then you pull four pins on the table in each corner, or one, one pin on each corner, and you can pull this table off and put those other legs and move it wherever you want to. Okay, in your pan case in the cabinet on the, in the trailer, you'll find there'll be five trays that have the components for the, for the demonstration. Um, the top part of this is an infiltration tray. And then there's also the jar bracket for the front of the front of the simulator and when when I'm putting this together I like to put the jar bracket on first because you want to get kind of all that set up because everything pushes forward to that jar bracket and it's really hard to put that in after you've got all the soil weight and the rest of the pieces together so then I put my infiltration tray and against my jar bracket and you'll notice on the infiltration tray, uh, there are some foam pads on the front and the back of those trays. And it also lines up under your soil pan. And this is pretty important for you to uh, get this right because the, the pad in the front keeps water from running in from the outside source. You don't want to have a lot of extra water getting into this tray that isn't true infiltration water from the demonstration. You'll also notice around the outside edge there's a little bit of a space that that tray will set so all the infiltration holes will, should be inside the edge of this, in, of this infiltration tray. So when you're putting your soil pans on there there's 
There's some tabs that help you line that up, but make sure that you have that all in position so that the, the, the rubber seals are as good as you can get them and that your side that you don't have have your uh, pan hanging over the outside of the tray or the tray hanging out on the other side. Uh, some of our earlier models did not have the tabs on the infiltration tray so it's easy to get those off and if you've got water flowing in the side of that infiltration tray from your nozzle it's going to give you a, uh, an unrealistic uh, demonstration with that. The other thing that's in the in the pan setup is the the funnel that goes on the front of the tray and these have little white flexible tabs on that and that is to this sets down over the edge of the pan there's a there's a, a fold and a groove on the back of the funnel and that snaps down over the front of the tray but the white tabs go inside the pan when you have that in place water is not shooting out through the corners of the of the pans so that's um, in our earlier earlier runs you could see water going everywhere the demonstrations still work but you you have a lot more water going into your runoff jar if you capture all the water that's that's there the last part of this is is the funnel cover. This just has two little angle brackets on it that just set and wedge itself down on the, on the funnel. Now you'll want to make sure that you're, you're centered up on your jar bracket and uh, that's basically the setup that once the soil pans are, are full, that's basically the way it should look as you uh, get ready to do your demonstration. Next thing we're gonna do is we'll hang the jars on the, on the, the brackets in the fil infiltration tray. Uh, you'll notice in the jars you have two different ones. One have, the bale has a, an S hook on it and the other one doesn't. The one that doesn't hangs on the front of the jar bracket and the, you'll notice that on the jar bracket, there's some notches in there that you can move that forward or back. It depends on how fast the water's running off. The jar with the, the S hook on it, that hooks underneath the infiltration tray. And I'll show you what that. There's a, a little hook underneath that with a, a drain hole and you'll hook that on that. We, we put the S hook on that so that the, the jar will actually turn so that the water doesn't run down through the hole and then run over the outside edges of the bale. We've also got the bales on the inside of this model so that the water that does run off on that will actually go in the jar. You can also adjust the, the slope of your pans with these T-bars on the back. You just loosen the, the nut and slide it up. We have have the, um, the the bar notched so that it will it holds better that way. Um, once you put those pans on there, some of them weigh 40, 50 pounds by the time they're wet and stuff, and so you don't want that bar to slip on you. It doesn't look like very much, but the the second and third pans are probably between five and seven percent slope. So we'll set all these down at two. Um, this will make a difference in your demonstration, kind of depending on how much time you've got. Uh, if you want to have fast runoff, you want to have slow runoff, you want to, uh, if you want to emphasize the infiltration, is how you set your demonstration up will, will uh, show you a different, different response from the, from the actual demonstration. So I encourage you to Set it up, try different things with it, with the type of soils that you wanna, wanna do your presentations with. Um, you'll find that you'll learn a tremendous amount about, about uh, erosion processes and soil functions just by using this, this equipment. Our goal is, is to help make you look professional and 
uh, the better you, job you do at setting up your, your presentation and the program and the more familiar with it, the more impact that, in, that demonstration is going to have on your audience. We, uh, we have two display panels and basically what these are do is to provide you a little contrast on your, on your program so that you can show soil splash or you can so, so that if you're, you know, people are looking at the bottom jars to try to see the infiltration, it, you don't get a lot of background uh, color coming into the jars and it helps give you a little better visual with that. Um, there's a wing nut on each end of these and these can be installed either in the front of the front of the table. They just mount in these holes where the table pins go. There's a set on this side. I normally put mine in the back because I don't want to be messing with it, but a lot of people will put it in the front so that they can hide the infiltration jars. They like to call that their aha moment. And when you pull that off, it's kind of a Kind of a neat surprise to find out just how much water is actually infiltrating through. Um, I'm going to put this one on the inside just for just for uh, because that's the way I normally do it. <laughs> the other display board will put that on the last thing that we do to set up the demonstration. That way you've got access to get to your soil pans in with the trays and stuff. Uh, this is kind of a typical setup that you might see with the simulation. What we have is, is this is soil that's just the bare soil. It's, I just pulled this out of my, my dirt pile back here and it's just a consolidated mess of stuff. And, but it, it would be kind of a typical soil that you might see under a tillage situation. The next to that is a no-till soil. Then this is a conventional till soil that's dry, and this would be one that you would uh, you would see this time of year, getting ready for wheat harvest or wheat planting time. is It's at a fairly fine condition. The next pan over is an alfalfa field. We'll see what that one does, and then the last pan is the soil that we just dug out of the out of the prairie out here just a little bit ago with our template. Uh, a few things about the way you set your pans up across here is I always like to do my most durable treatments on the outside of the pans and for this soil here we're gonna we're gonna put a hundred percent cover on on this soil um, I like to show this just to show the difference in what the impact of the raindrop does on on our typical soil, on our, on our soils. And so my normal simulation would take this soil and I'd have two pans exactly alike, only one of those soils would have it covered with residue to protect it from the impact of the raindrop. And then, then we'll see what happens with that. The reason I wanna put the most durable treatments on the outside is because if you get a little bit of a wind drift or you don't have your simulator set up quite right and you get, get it turning over the pan or the, the wind blows a little extra water in on those pans, your durable treatments will, will handle that. If you have like a, a pan of bare soil over there, your participants will see that right off. Uh, if you put a lot of extra water on that particular pan or they believe that that's what's happening on it and you get a tremendous amount of runoff that then you kind of lose the impact of what you're trying to do. Uh, I get a lot of comments about well the center pan gets more water anyway. They all get the same amount of water because remember when we set that up that the, the water passes on the outside of the table so that it doesn't turn over the tray so each individual gets uh, the same amount of, of water no matter where it's positioned on that. Also another thing that you don't want to happen is is that if you have a pan like this on the outside that angle of the, the, the nozzle a lot of your raindrop splash is going to be coming off the side of the off the side of the, uh, the table and you won't be getting it at all in your, your uh, 
your jars. And so there's just a few little tricks that, you know, to set up a really good demonstration that you want to keep, keep in mind so that you're not, you're not showing something that they can't believe. And um, so just the placement is very important to me to make sure that you, you do that and you eliminate a couple of those things that are readily uh, visible when you're putting your demonstration on. Uh, I think we've pretty much got everything. I like to put a couple of, of uh, rain gauges on it. You can put a rain gauge in each individual one. If anybody's got any concerns about more water being on there, then you can you can explain it. And you know, it's a rain it's a rain simulation. It's a demonstration. It's uh, if if you were going to do research with it, you would have to move, shuffle these pans around several different times to to get a good replicated demonstration on it. But we're doing a demonstration. And so showing how much water is each one of those pans is really, is just really part of that demonstration. This is one of these demonstrations, one of these pans may be getting a quarter of an inch rain more. Well, you can show that. The last portion of this is the, is our display board. The clamp goes to the back <laughs> to hold the, the clamp actually works really, works to stabilize the water tower. You set that on there and then fit the groove down over the tabs on the back of the simulator. We have a couple of pull down screens. That helps shield the interior of your of your trailer, plus gives you a, a pretty decent visual on some things. You can leave that up. Okay. Uh, I think we're ready to run the simulation.